Dice Tower Tonight, Episode 4. Um, Essen, 2017. Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, Tom and I play show and tell with a few recent games, talk about some post-Essen logistics, and then take your questions live. I'm Eric Summerer, and here's your host, the SpongeBob to my Patrick, Tom Vassell. I really feel like you've used that one before. It's entirely possible. I panicked. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind being the SpongeBob because as dumb as SpongeBob might be, he doesn't yeah. hold a candle to Patrick. There that, is like, that is true. There's nothing about Patrick that I find remotely <laughs> useful in a friend with the exception of the guy who voiced him, I think is funny. Okay, sure. That'll work. So folks... Welcome to the Dice Tower tonight. Um, this is a video show, so for somehow you're hearing this as an audio version, that will explain um, the quality because we post this live and the fact that we might be talking about things that we can see that you can't. Indeed. So there's also a chance, folks, that as you're watching this, that we might take some of your questions live, especially if you're asking something about what we're talking about at any given point in time. <laughs> yes, yeah, that usually helps. Yeah. So this was a lot going on. We just both got back from Essen. Yes. How was your flight back? Uh, it was okay. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't great. It was in the middle. It was... Mm, yeah. yeah. It was just a long flight. The problem is we got back, and I went immediately to bed. Well, our flight was delayed and stuff, so I didn't get home till like 1030. That's probably around the time you got home. Uh, well, you I got was home, home later. Been out about midnight. Yeah, a little after midnight, I was finally home. So I collapsed to sleep, got up the next day, went to work briefly, and then it was Halloween, and I was running a whole big thing. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. But did you go <laughs> trick-or-treating with your kids? Uh, I did. Uh, my kids are still young enough that they get tired quickly, so my youngest was ready to, to go home after about an hour or so, which was great because I had this podcast I had to edit, uh, so I, I was able to get home and get, get back to work pretty quickly. So if you're wondering, folks, where that podcast is, I went to upload this morning, and there was a problem with the website. Oh. So it should be up uh, when we're done with the show, maybe. Okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, I didn't realize this I'd is better than our, uh, our, our associate, Suzanne, who had her flight canceled and, and had to do some uh, you know, crazy shenanigans to get home. So I, I think she did make it home, as far as I know. Uh, but it was it was more difficult for for her than I think for anybody else on this particular trip home. A couple of announcements before we start, folks. First of all, the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund is currently the auction is currently going on right now. So if you have a chance to um, go put up items for that, maybe on our next dice tower thing, we'll talk about some of those items um, oh. tonight. Thing. Uh, sure. Secondly, next Tuesday is the official grand opening of the cool stuff in Kendall, Florida. So if you have a chance to come on out for that, the, our local game cafe, Mac and Chess, which has amazing food, is bringing by some food to celebrate. There will be a raffle of games and we'll all be there with hot new Essen titles. Ooh. Like this nice. uh, stuff behind me. Ooh. Yeah, nice. that's a nice display you have there. It looks like one of those ones that people pay to get put in the background. But ah. this has not happened. So, Eric, did you get the Essen exit games? Uh, I, I got the three new releases, yes. I have not broken into them yet, but I'm very excited to play them. This, folks, is where Eric is um, not as good of a friend to me as I am to him. Really? Well, here's why. Because I told you about those exit games, but yeah. you did not tell me where to get unlock, and I did what? not get unlock. I was... That was my number one game to get. It was the first thing I was running for, and I, I didn't tell you where to find them. You didn't. I'm sorry. It was I. That I'm was the thing I ran for first. Absolutely first thing, and you were distracted with other things. I'm not actually that upset about it because the I'd rather play the exit games anyway. Okay, I'm just happy to have all six. <laughs> I'll play my three before you play one of them. <laughs> Maybe. I have Pandemic Legacy to get through first. You're done with that already. Have you started it? 
Uh, I have opened it up and read through the rules. I'm I'm ready to go when my family's able to. Uh, this I'm, is I'm interesting. Like, I'm really curious what you what you're going to think of this one. Okay. I'm calling it now that 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 you're going to think it's harder, but I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I we sort of coasted to the end of season one. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of challenge is good, but my son might freeze up if it gets too tough. So I'm a little I'm a little wary of that. But I think we'll be able to handle it. My youngest has sort of said he wants to jump in too, so we might have a four player going. Okay, so um, let's get started here. Uh, wait a minute. Someone. Okay, anyway, um, we're going to talk about some games. Yeah, why so, not? The first game I have is really not really much for review, but more of a show and tell. Ah. And that is. Oh, oh. oh, this is out now. It is? I missed I think, it. I think Marvel's out even. But this one definitely came out like three weeks ago. I apparently wasn't paying attention. Anyhow, so Codenames Disney. I'm going to assume at this point, folks, that you know how to play Codenames if not. But it comes with cards like this, okay? But what I really like is that on the back of the cards is this. Okay. So I didn't realize this. Maybe maybe you knew about this, but they actually have, so they have the pictures on one side. What's the word on the other side of this one? Uh, Snow White and Prince Charming. Love. All right, all right. Okay. Let's let's see what you can get for the next one. Let's see if we can get this one here. Um, what's the word on uh, the other side of that one? Uh, sea shanty. Come on, that was really that was really obvious. All yeah, right. all right. Let's see. We'll get Eric's. Um, let's see here. No, it's too easy. Uh, that's too easy. Too easy. Okay, here about this one. Well, that's the Incredibles. Family. Oh, that's Aha! right. All right. That's right. You're getting there. You're getting there. Um, dancing. Ball. Okay. That was close enough. Yeah, all right. Let's, well, that could also be dancing. He's right, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, when you play this one, you have these little cards here. Now, you'll notice these are a lot easier than the regular cards are for code names. There are four by four grid, and there's no automatic lose. Oh, there's no them. assassin. Okay. But that is included with the game, but also are included the full ones. It's not called the assassin card. It's called just game over card. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, what I like about this is this gives you multiple ways to play this. You have codenames pictures. You have codenames normal. You have an easy method, and you have a harder method. Okay. The, and there is this many cards. Nice. And you can even mix the pictures and the words if you want to. And then these are the things you cover them up with. That's the blue one and the red one. Hmm. And if you use the game over card, it's just a big X. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, these are the neutral cards. It's actually a pretty nice production. I really like this. Um, this I would prefer, honestly, I think I'd prefer playing this over both Codenames and Codenames Pictures. I'm not a huge disney file. I mean, I, I, I like this stuff well enough, but I like, I like this stuff. Like, I like the fact that they're movies. I don't know. I, I, it, I'm actually really looking forward to the Marvel one. Okay. But, um... Let me a quick look here and see if the – I thought the Codenames Marvel was out in the stores. Well, I'm looking it up on, on uh, cool stuff right now. So we got Codenames, and yes, Marvel is out. All right. Marvel, Marvel and Disney are both $18, okay. which is actually more than Codenames, which is only $14.49. And pictures, which is twelve ninety nine, huh? But still, it's pretty cheap. I think you're paying for the license in this situation, right? Yeah. So I think this is pretty cool. Uh, I like I like what it adds to the the genre. It's not just a license. Well, I mean, okay, let me rephrase that. It is just a license slapped on, mm -hmm. but it feels like they did a good job. And you can use all kinds of different words. You know, how do you mix that picture with that picture? You know, there's different ways to do that. And I like that. It's an interesting idea. So Neat. Eric's going to get this game. 
I feel uh, like. yeah, yeah, it's likely. So my first game to talk about is right here. Can't stop express. Um, See, I, I have to say, I'm already suspicious about this one, and I'll tell you why. Because how can't stop already is a pretty fast game. Yes, and and I was pretty wary as well until I, I actually went to the booth and uh, and and look got a good look at it. Um, this is based on the solo rules for Can't Stop. It's actually a Sid Saxon game. These were his rules for the solo version of Can't Stop. Um, but I was wary because why do you need to have an express version? Um, so it comes with a bunch of score pads like this. You've got a, uh, a section on the left that has the different numbers, the various combinations of two dice that you can make and Can't Stop. And then there's a small section up here for a fifth die. This is a simultaneous roll game. You've got five dice. Somebody rolls the five dice in a particular round. And then in your head, everyone's using the same roll. You pair up four of the dice into two pairs. And those are the things you're marking down on the left side of your pad. And then that fifth die, the one that's left over, you then mark down, say it's a five, you'd write down five, and then one instance of that five. On the next roll, you're then going to make a new two pairs and pick another fifth die. You could pick the five again and then just mark down another instance of five or pick another value. Eventually, you will have three different values on your fifth die field and you'll be filling those in. And from then on, you have to choose one of those values as your fifth die in order to continue. That makes sense. You, ha you have to choose one of your fifth die numbers if you can. If not, you get sort of a free pass and can just make the pairs however you want. Now, if you only get one, two, three, four instances of, of, a, of a number that you're using for a pair, you're going to take negative points. It's worth negative 200 points if you start a row of a, of a number and don't get far enough along that path. If you get five instances of that number, it's worth zero points. But then if you get past that, each one of those instances is now worth points. And if it's the sevens, they're worth 30 points apiece. But if it's the twos or the twelves, the less likely ones, those are worth 100 points apiece if you manage to get to the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth instances of that, that pairing. Uh, this continues until you have reached the end of one of your fifth die tracks. Then the game is over for you, and you will total up your negative points, your positive points, and, and see who wins. Uh, so for each player, it may continue a few more rolls than the first person to go out. And that's it. That's the game. Um, I was surprised at how different it was from regular Can't Stop. You know, to have called it Can't Stop, I, it almost felt like it was a separate dice game that they had just put the name on. But they assure me that this was actually Can't Stop Rules. I, I liked it. Um, it. It plays quickly. It, it is an express game. The, the fact that everybody's playing off the same roles is kind of cool. A little, lit, a little bit like uh, Take It Easy, uh, where everybody's using the same information then just doing different things with it. I, I liked it. I'm glad I picked this one up. I think this is going to see some playtime with the family. That is Can't Stop Express from Eagle Griffin. I got to say, you have not sold me on it, though. No? Maybe it's just that you're bad at explaining games, but that did not sound interesting. <laughs> We're going to run with this. Sam accuses Eric of being bad at teaching games. Seriously. Uh, so th there is the tension of do you, do you start a new row? Um, do I start working on threes or fours? If it's mid-game, do I think I'm going to get enough threes or fours to be able to break even or score points? And sometimes you're forced to do that in order to take the fifth die value that you need to take. There's, there's some tension here. All right. Well, we'll see. Someone asked a question about code names and want to know: Are the pictures only from classic Disney, as a George, or is there more modern stuff? Well, as you saw, I showed something from Inside Out already. Uh, there's a lot of the classic stuff here, but you know, there's like I don't know how modern you consider Mike. Or <laughs> wait, well, this one's pretty modern, isn't it? Isn't this from? That's Moana. Yeah, that's, a, that's like the, as modern as you can be. I don't think. Oh well, yeah. There you go. There she is. All right, so I, yeah, so it's a mix of everything. All right, my next game is Doodle Rush. Hmm. This is from Brain Games. They're most well known for only one game, and that's Ice Cool, which has sold really well. Yes. So in this game, you're going to draw two cards. 
You can play the easy side or ridiculously hard and no one should ever do it side. So you choose. Um, so you get six words. You can see the words here are cliff, envelope, hulk, purse, omelet, and boot. Each person is going to get six boards of a color. Like this. These are the boards. They have the different color in the back, along with a pen. We're going to flip a minute timer, and you will draw these pictures of your words on these things as fast as you can. When the timer runs out, you will flip the timer over again, and at that point, people will start guessing what's on the cards. They'll say, is that a dog? And you say, yes, no, close, not even close, things like that. If someone gets your guess correctly, they'll take the card and put it face down in front of them. After the minute of that runs up, you flip the timer again, and you continue drawing. And then you flip it again and continue guessing. You flip it again, draw, flip it again, guess. The entire game, six minutes. Okay. At the end of the game, you will count the number of cards that you've taken, correct guesses. They're all worth one point each. And every card that in front of you that no one has guessed is a negative point. Most points is the winner. So this is kind of an interesting game, right? It's kind of like a lark. Again, the things are pretty easy. Cliff, envelope, hulk, purse, omelet, boot. Those are things I can draw. It's a little harder to draw jazz, show, <laughs> metal, sheet, hanger. Well, hanger is actually pretty easy. Or mandolin. Or like emergency, fabric, fabric, Ooh. paragraph. How do you do paragraph without it? Well, I guess I, I might be able to pull off paragraph. But, you know, it's a much, much harder thing to play yeah. that side. So the game is a little bit of a frenzied game. You're essentially just, and I keep forgetting that when I'm talking, I should go to the big screen. So <laughs> once again, these are the, uh, the, the things being used. Anyhow, so <laughs> someone just asked that. Um, okay, so let me show you these cards again so that I don't. I'm going to blame Eric for this because he's running this. So wait, you, you had me just reacting to you on the big screen the whole time? Yes. That's great. Um, That's good. So these are uh, pictures of the cards there that with the, the six words. Um, these are easier words to get and then the hard words. I'd like you to get baritone. Try to guess that sucker. <laughs> Maybe I draw a, a barbershop quartet with all the, the straw hats and I put like the second from the right. How good of an artist are you? I, I can draw straw hats really well. Yeah. So the game is silly fun, right? You know, you're quick, um, as quickly as you can, drawing pictures, and then people are guessing them. And it's good for a lark. I, I, I would rank it a 6, 6.5. Uh, it was entertaining, and then it, I'm good. Like, I played six <laughs> minutes of it. I'm good. Z really right. likes it. I think he's going to give it a much better review. He thinks it works well with family and stuff. And I can see that. Um, my biggest concern is you get that person who's really fast at guessing and they just win the game. Again, mm. it's six minutes, so it's not that big of a deal, but it kind of is a speeding thing. How fast can you get stuff done? So I liked it. That is, I didn't love it, but you know, it's a decent game. Doodle Rush. So you're actually drawing all six things at once? Is that? Well, I mean, unless you are like a, a superhero, you only draw one of the things once. Right, but you're, you, I mean, you're supposed to sort of do a quick thing on one and then the quick thing on the other. You're, you're working on all six words at once. Right, that's correct. Okay. All right. Next for me is Flea. This is uh, one of Freedom and Freeze's new fast-forward games. The concept here is, is that um, these games are not supposed to be explained beforehand. You're not supposed to have rules. Um, I like to make a, a quick aside here. Yeah. I am tired of this, these restrictions being put upon us as reviewers. There's, <laughs> so many, there's so many games we can't talk about. And we're like, wow, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Ah, I don't know. That's true. So you, I mean, this Sorry. is all that's in the box. You, you've got an empty box with a bag to put the deck in and a wrapped deck. Uh, that you then slap on the table and say, all right, here we go, everybody ready? And you read the cards and turn them over in sequence. This is all um, you know, put together in, in a proper sequence so that the plot sort of develops as you go and the rules develop as you go. I'm not spoiling. I'm only going to go a couple cards in here in explaining this. 
Flea is a cooperative game uh, with a loose Alice in Wonderland theme. The characters are Alice in Wonderland characters. And you are running not from the Jabberwock, but from the classic 2F spiel monster, uh, like Freedom and Freeze's iconic monster. It's a game of keep away. Uh, so one player starts out. In fact, there are four characters playing no matter how many players you have. So you may be controlling more than one character. One character has the monster in front of them. And if the turn order gets to the character that has the monster, the game is over and you've lost. So this game is all about maneuvering the monster, skipping over the player who has the monster, and, and preventing that player from taking turns. You can reverse the turn order, you can skip over them, you can swap cards, um, and you're using other action cards to move, manipulate the board situation so that, uh, so that the player with the monster does not take a turn. As you work your way through the deck, you will gain additional powers and the rules sort of shift and alter and move around. And that I won't, I won't spoil for you. But it is a sort of a cooperative game of keep away. And one I have enjoyed. I've only played through about, there's multiple chapters as you reveal more and more cards. I've gotten through chapter three, reached chapter three of the whole story and have enjoyed it quite a lot. What are you doing? Uh, that was very noisy. I that wasn't just, distracting at all, was it? You know, just right in front of the microphone. He just dumped all those components right all... Anyway. Flea, I enjoyed a lot. Uh, it, it's one that I can't wait to play with the, the kids uh, and, and try and escape the monster more efficiently and see what's at the end of that deck. I don't know what's there, but I'm excited to figure it out. And uh, I think I paid 12 euros for this. I don't know what the list price is in the U.S. yet. Uh, but I think it's I think it's worth exploring Flea. I like it. Thumbs up. Flea from Stronghold and 2F Spieler. Well, would you um, would you you played Fortress? Which one did you like better? I played Fortress in this. I think I like this better just because I'm more leaning toward co-ops. But Fortress is also interesting. It's and interesting in a good way. Stop making fun of that word. Um, I, I like that one also. It, wow, it's, it's like it's like you can read the comments here. <laughs> I know. So the. Uh, Fortress does, um, it's sort of a trick-taking game in, in which the, the way the rules evolve, it almost anticipates the way people have been playing and then reveals a new rule that makes it difficult to play that way. And that's, that's kind of cool, too. And I'd, I'd love to get to the end of Fortress. That's not one I own. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to play to the end of that one as well. And Fear is the third one in the series. I uh, haven't even had a chance to explore that one yet. But for now, Flea is plenty. All right. I'm going to talk about a game here. Hopefully, Eric won't whine as much since I'm not going to drop the pieces again. You did drop them right into the microphone, as far as I could tell. The King's War. King's Will? The King's Will. <laughs> the King's Will... This is a game from Blackfire, which when I saw the board oh. and the pieces, I was completely not interested in this game at all. Um, a lot of the pieces are scattered on the floor here. Now, what makes this game interesting? It has an interesting mechanism. At the bottom of the board are a bunch of these tiles here, like this. And what players are going to be doing is on your turn, you're going to choose one of these tiles. And you can take the top action, the bottom action, or, I mean, you can take the top and the bottom, or you can take two of one of the action. Everybody else gets one of that action, one of their choice. So that works really well. No matter what action someone takes, they're going to get better because they can do it twice, or they can take both actions, and you get one. So you're going to get to do every action. No one can stop you from doing an action, but the person who picks it will get the benefit. Although one of the actions... Um, you can pick another action and do it only once, but no one else can do an action. So there's that too. You can only do a few of the actions. The actions are sliding at the bottom of the board, and some of them are quote-unquote unlocked. Those are the actions you can do. And once you do an action, it goes back to the beginning and pushes the rest of the actions forward. Mm -hmm. When one of the actions hits the end spot, the game will end. Now, you can, you can pick... That, that will only happen if you pick every action. Because if you don't pick an action, 
they won't all move over eventually. But eventually, everyone's going to pick one of the actions that can go on. So what are these actions? Well, some of the actions will be putting lands in front of you. You have these land tiles like this, and you'll be putting lands together. These lands will produce things, some of the action. If you have workers that are on these lands, they will produce whatever this one is. So this is a wood. You keep track of your production on a little board that you have, although later on you can extend that board and have more resources of the different types. You can also build specific buildings in front of you. Each building can go underneath a land like that. And you can build little wooden structures on top of them. These wooden structures allow you to get more workers and do different things. It's your typical Euro game. You are trying to get points. But you know what? I liked it. I like that bottom action thing a lot. I like that the game has you pick these actions like Puerto Rico where everyone gets to do them. So I'm never bored. Even on everyone else's turn, I'm always doing something. Whether it's producing resources, uh, you're gonna move the you're gonna move your workers around on your little board in front of you, and the different spots you move them in will allow you to put more buildings there or to produce resources of that type. You get these resources, which allow you to build more structures, and the special buildings give you special buildings no one else has. It's a fun little game. Um, the king shows up every once in a while and requires you to pay him tribute or whatever, but you know what he's looking for ahead of time, so it's not too bad. It's, I don't think it's going to set the world on fire, but it was a fun little game. That's the king's will. Hmm. All right, last for me is a game from Osprey Games. This is called Samurai Gardener. Ah. Uh, this, ah. I think this is one of the most erroneously named games ever. Uh, it doesn't have much to do with samurais at all. If you really are excited about samurais, this is not going to do it for you because I don't, I don't think samurais show up at all in this game. Like, there's no pictures of samurais. There's, this is mostly a gardening game. So if you, if you came to this looking for samurais, no. But if you came to it for gardening, you're good. So it's the, not uh, even that, though. The game is... I, when I, if you said samurai gardening... I'm going to think, peaceful, put the garden out, that type of thing, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so it's mostly made up of these cards. The cards have four different features on them. You've got water, you've got paths, you've got tatamis, and you've got gardens, like uh, green areas. And each card is going to have a different pattern of these in, uh, in groupings of six, okay? Uh, you have in front of you... Four scoring cards, one for each of these types of, of terrain. Uh, you are creating a grouping of these cards and trying to make groups of at least four of them. Four of them, right? No, 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 no. where's the little card here? Three in a row. Three, four, or five in a row. Uh, three in a row is worth one point. Four in a row is worth two points. Five in a row is worth four points, but six or more, zero points. So you're you don't want to make them too big. And you're just trying to make lines of these things. And in fact, once you have made a line of three or more in a row, you can't cover up those lines anymore with new cards that you're adding. And each time you score a particular type of terrain, you flip over one of your scoring cards and you can't score that type again until you've scored all of the different types. So you're trying to sort of spread out, uh, you know, evenly score the different types of terrain. How do you acquire these cards? That's what's important. So there's two ways to play this. You can either flip up one card per player and then do a nice orderly draft. In which the start player picks one and then the next player picks one. And that is the way we played it. That takes a while because there's a lot of thinking that has to happen as the start player looks at all four cards and tries to position them in their empire. And, and that can, yeah, AP certainly comes into play here. The way they actually suggest you play it is to flip all four up and then you slap. You actually, you, there's like a chant. You all go, you go, ha, 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 and, and flip them all up. Sorry, then, what's the chant? I don't, that's not the chant. It's that not actually the official chant. There is an official chant that um, I apparently don't have in front of me. It, don't worry about it. It's a specific chant. And once the chant happens, you slap the card that you want. And whoever gets their hand more on the card, because if two people go for the card, whoever's covering it more is going to win, um, gets that card. So you have to make that quick decision. It's kind of like factory fun 
where you quickly analyze the thing you want and then grab it. Um, and that is the non-stressful or non-calming part of the game that Tom's alluding to here. Uh, and that would certainly speed things up in the game, but then you're going to make the mistakes that you make when you make these quick decisions and slap things very quickly. Uh, I, I think I might prefer the game with the slappy part. Um, just to keep it moving. I, I felt it dragged just a hair when we were drafting all of the uh, all of the different cards. It was it was neat in in trying to build your your assortment because you sort of lock yourself in as you make strings of these terrains. You now can't cover them with with cards as you try and score the other terrains. That's tough and tricky, and and I like that puzzly aspect in a game. But I do think I'd prefer. And then this is probably why they they suggest playing it this way, uh, with the the quick selection of cards, because it keeps you from really bogging the game down. So it you can play it either way. If you really want to analyze, uh, you can you can go more slowly. But uh, I think I would prefer the slappy nature of Samurai Gardener. I have to say, this is another one that you have not sold me on. No. You, uh, you, when I read the description, it just didn't sound like this whole slap things really quickly. I like the idea of putting tiles out. I'm not sure I like the idea of grabbing them quickly. I guess that's maybe the samurai aspect. The the quick slappy part, because samurai are known for... You feel like things. you see a bunch of samurai. <laughs> <laughs> they walk around us. Mine! <laughs> Mine! I put my hand my No, sir! All righty. Well, those are the games we have to talk about. Speaking of games, we brought back a few games from Essen. Yes. Okay. So this is what I wanted to talk about tonight because it more that we, we've seen some pictures on Twitter of various folks who have come back from Essen. Here's my haul. And we've heard the stories of how to pack uh, suitcases, nesting games inside of other games and, uh, and trying to worry about weight and maybe having to ship a box home. You have a slightly more involved problem. How many boxes of games did you bring back from Germany, Tom? I don't know. Uh, I have a list somewhere. But I counted it up, and we're really we're just shy of 300 games. 300 games. Now, in order to get 300 games home, what did you have to do? Well, first of all, we brought some back in the suitcases. So I grabbed some of the heavier ones. So... This game here, which everyone is pleading for us to review, mm -hmm. which we will once we've played it, the sequel to Orleans Ataplano. I'm just, I'm not really taunting people, but this is a heavy box. It's less heavy now. You can punch games out, but we just didn't have time at Essen. Essen was just, no. we were full blast the whole time. So this game went into my personal carry on because it's heavy. My heaviest games that I'm also interested in playing, that's where they go. All right, fine. Um, so then after that, the then the second thing I do with games is I put them in my regular luggage. Now, the only thing I bring to conventions usually is my clothing, which doesn't take up a ton of luggage, and a few other odds and ends. Some things I usually, especially for Essen, I brought toiletries that were either small or were almost empty. Basically, <laughs> I just left them there. Okay. Right? I didn't bring any of that stuff back. Hoping I wouldn't get stuck somewhere overnight because that'd be bad. <laughs> um, okay. And I left anything that I didn't need. I brought my clothes back. I'm not a cretin. Um, and so I packed a bunch of games into my suitcases. After that, I have special access to other ways of getting things back. Not everyone does, but I ship some stuff back quickly that I will get hopefully tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Uh, Thursday or Friday. And then finally... The big giant, we, we ship the pallet back. It's a pallet, yeah. Yeah. Most people don't have that sort of... <laughs> uh, we worked with a company to get that pallet shipped back. But again, uh -huh. this is a unique thing. Most people should not be... You should not be buying this many games. We're not going to play all these games. And there's three of us working full-time at it. You're not going to play 300 games in the course of a year unless you're a reviewer or you really are part of the cult of the new... And I don't think you should be getting all them at Essen anyway. There's good games that come out the rest of the year. Yes. But it was pretty impressive to see all of these because you packed the game boxes in cardboard boxes. 
and stacked them on this pallet to come back. And it's pretty impressive to think of, of your workload for the next basically year sitting on that pallet. Well, the thing is, I mean, uh, we were saying this earlier today. We just, not everything gets reviewed. We pick the most interesting stuff. So this basically it works like this. This hot game, sequel to Orleans, this is getting played. So this comes out. I got the exit games behind me and Dinosaur Island, you can see a little bit there. And mm -hmm. the Master's Trials and the New Ascension, although... Um, a couple of those games were shipped to me. This is 300 games we picked up at Essen, not including games shipped to us. There's probably been another 50 to 100 that were shipped to us over the past week or are on the way. So basically you're saying you're not going to any more conventions for the next six months because you're good. You don't need any more games. I am not seeking games out, okay? <laughs> People were dropping games off at the booth. I, I know that this is sounding to some people, they're like, Oh, that sounds so horrible. <laughs> People came by and threw games at you. And we don't mean it to be that way. It is a kind of cool thing to have all these games. But it is also an overwhelming task. Not all these games are going to get reviewed. We're going to have to go through and choose which ones get reviewed or not. That's a tough thing. Yeah. Obviously, the hottest games will get reviewed. But how many games did you bring home? Uh, let's see. I, I can actually look out there. There's a pile. I didn't bring the pile into the studio. Um, I got the, the unlock games, uh, the new unlock adventures, the new exit adventures. I got Flea, obviously. Um, I think maybe I brought back a dozen. Yeah, that's a little, that's a few less than what you got. Um, Pulsar 2849 is on that pile. Uh, I got a copy of Off Oxa. But that's not really a new game. Uh, the Bubbly Pop expansion. I got a new co-op game, The Secret Door. I got Tiny Epic Quest. A lot of the games I picked up were pretty small. I only had maybe two or three full-size boxes, and the rest were, were nice little small things. I, I managed to get everything into my suitcase and under the weight limit. I just had to put like a pair of jeans into my carry-on and all the Stroop waffles that I brought home, and I think I was pretty good. Well, you should have taken last Stroop Waffles. No, no, I shouldn't have because this we're going to go through those pretty fast. This is a hilarious thing, folks. Every year, we take all the food that people give to us, and oh my goodness, mm. people give us a lot of stuff at Essen. Lots of Stroop Waffles, lots of delicious treats and candy and stuff. Yep. And we put it on the big pile, and then we hold a draft. There are two people who take this draft more seriously than life or death. That's Jason Levine and Eric Summer. The rest of us are content at getting the leftovers after these guys take the best stuff. Just because I am fast when you say, take what you want, and I take that literally, I don't understand what the problem is. I'm not saying there's a problem, because I'm not upset about it. I'm just saying you take it seriously. You just, you just brought it up. I thought maybe you were upset. I maybe took a couple packs of screw waffles and some chocolate and um, that, that crazy fizzy stuff that you're supposed to just shove in your mouth and, and it fizzes and explodes well that's stuff i wanted but you you took it i offered to split it with you yeah but it's one of those offerings where you didn't really mean it and we're hoping i would say no so anyway we had um you know some food items in the carry-on and uh yeah i did pretty well as far as weight goes i was at 22.9 kilograms though so it was it was Hang close on. there's some people here saying they don't know what a stroop waffle is what do you have I one on you to uh, show people. Not, not that I could grab right away, but they are a, like a thin wafer with caramel on the inside. Think of like a wafer sandwich with caramel. It's like a, a circle about this, about this big, like this. And uh, it, it's, they're traditionally warmed up over your coffee or tea so that it's, it's all sort of melty and, and warmy and gooey. Oh, that's it's amazing. the best way to have them for sure. It's amazing. Good stuff. And they come in like a sleeve, basically, of 10 or 12 of them. It's good. They're Dutch. Oh, there we go. That is a Stroop waffle. That is delicious. Okay, so um, there's other things that come back from Essen, too. There's all sorts of gadgets and gadgets and, and promos. And here's the thing. Here's, here's a trick I learned really soon. Someone gives you the English rules to a game, or they give you promos to a game. 
Immediately mm. open that game and put those inside. That's a good idea, yes. Because if you don't, you'll get home and you'll be like, I have no idea what these gold cubes go to. <laughs> uh -huh. And if you can delineate that they're a promo too, that's helpful too. Because then you'll get the game and you'll play it and you'll go, what are these pieces here? <laughs> Yep, yep, that's that's ever helpful. I mean, again, uh, the scale of number of games you're talking about are sort of part of that problem. Eric, you got a cake. I did get a cake. Uh, it, it was my birthday uh, a few weeks ago. Birthday. That's a huge my, birthday. My 40th birthday. And our, our good friends, Uli and Elena, who were helping us out at the booth, made a burned Das Brot birthday cake. And what they surprised me with it. and. Tom, we were doing a setup. This was Wednesday. So the fair had not yet opened. We were still setting up. And I, we were actually in some downtime playing a game um, at the booth. And Tom texts everyone and says, everyone, meet at the booth now, ASAP. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> something, something has gone wrong. Like uh, something we were expecting isn't shipped. Maybe our show was having some sort of issue, some some horrible emergency has just happened and we need to figure out what's going to happen. So I'm ready for some sort of crisis and team meeting and everyone assembles and then they sing happy birthday and here's a, a nice cake. So I was totally unprepared for it. I was ready in crisis mode, ready to help out with some sort of issue, but it turned out it was a, it was a birthday cake, which was great. So anyway... Um, we had this other, you know, we had food to bring back. If you buy any souvenirs, there's toys and other things you can buy. Yeah. So you gotta just, getting things back. Now you can ship from the fair. It's not cheap, but it can be done. Yep. You can ship stuff back. So a lot of people did it that way too. Yeah. There was actually a mailboxes, et cetera, in the hall, which I don't remember being there before, but it was this time, which was, I think, very helpful if you, like uh, some people, your eyes were bigger than your stomach or your weight limit and needed to send some stuff home. As long as you tested everything first, you did not want to be in that situation on Sunday evening flying out in eight hours or something and not know what to do with two or three games. Well, that's anyway, if anyone has any questions about shipping stuff from Essen or how we got stuff home or what, here's another good tip for you for shipping stuff from Essen. See these? Bye. <laughs> yeah, certainly. The I mean, some inserts are lovely and wonderful and functional, and you want to preserve those if at all possible. But many of those are just wasted space, wasted weight. And uh, yeah, when you're running running short on time or running short on weight, uh, that's a good way to um, to get more in. Man, I've got to do a lot of cleanup when we're done with this show. <laughs> I know. We're just sort of strewing things about. Ah, oh, boy. All righty. Well, folks, we have time for questions now. So if you have any questions for Eric or me, um, go ahead and ask them. I got my little document up here and running. Um, so go ahead. Um, Eric, have you played any games since we've gotten back? Since we've gotten back, no. I've had to jump into work stuff. Uh, there was a storm uh, here while we were away, and our roof leaked. And it actually leaked above my head onto my soundboard. And electronics and water, don't, they don't mix well. And so yesterday, I spent a good portion troubleshooting and draining and blow drying and trying to get my equipment back to where it's supposed to be. And I think things are behaving now. Uh, but it was a little hair-raising yesterday, so I, I haven't had a chance to play. I did, however, I think I mentioned, read the rules to Pandemic Legacy. That is next on my list and, uh, and hoping to get that to the table in the next couple days. Wow. Um, all right. <laughs> that sounds pretty, pretty bleh. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was not looking forward to replacing this particular piece of equipment, which I just replaced in the last three, four months. Now it, it seems to be working. All right, so some questions that we got here. Will we do a TI4 playthrough in the near future? No. Um, <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's just it's a lot of work. It's a lot of setup, and I'm not going to be involved, so Sam would have to find some stuff there. Someone says, thank you for the wonderful, the hilarious live show in Essen. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think it went well. 
I, um, the audio, it, it's, this is our usual issue when we're doing a live show, especially in Germany. Um, our Derek, our sound guy, was not there. Uh, he had to stay home this year, and so we didn't quite have the means to record it as directly as we would have liked. But I think, I think you should be able to follow along pretty well. And, uh, and and enjoy it. It's never quite as good uh, as it is when you're actually in the room, but we we try and capture as much as much of it as we can. It came across oh well, uh, okay. You'll see it posted very soon. That the show. Um, somebody uh, said, uh, "How the new phone mics you got? So far, we just have one, uh, but it works amazing." That yeah, this is- was Jason used these for his uh, his interview for his vlog that. That I believe is already posted on the channel, correct? They are. Unfortunately, it messed up on uh, Stefan Feld. It just was not plugged in. That's basically what happened. They recorded it. They figured it out r- right away. And Mr. Feld did not have the, the uh, opportunity to redo the interview. And mm. he had to go. So we figured we'd post it knowing people would complain, which they did. But I yeah. figured an interview was better than nothing at all. And some people were like, well, Tom did that to Feld. <laughs> Feld wore my hat, baby. Were you there when you did that, Eric? I, I missed that. Uh, you were you were ribbing Su- uh, Mandy about it because she was super excited to meet Stefan Feld, and uh, and you're like, well, you know, he didn't wear your hat. I gotta see if I can find that picture on my phone because I'm very proud of the fact that he wore my hat. Um, why do my kids take pictures on my phone? It's nearby. They don't have their own phones. They do have their own phones. Then why are they borrowing your phone? You know, this is a good question. Let's see. Kenny took the pictures. He also took a pictures of all the games in the boxes. That's um, helpful. Well, it is helpful. Let me show you. Like, this is one box of games that was packed to be sent. Ah, there's a lot of glare there. Yeah, it doesn't really come across very well, does it? Well, not while you're talking. This is fun. Oh, the glare's in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we live and learn. Oh, man, there's so many pictures of games in these boxes. Here we go. Because the boxes are all shrink-wrapped. They're all, uh, you know, yeah. reflecting the light. All right, there you go. Stefan Feld and me. I love him. <laughs> and he's wearing my hat. <laughs> That's... That's great. That's a buddy comedy just waiting to happen. He, he is, you know, I, I, I riff on him a lot in our shows. Just like I riff on Reiner Knizzi and other designers, but they are really jovial, great people. Mm-hmm. Reiner Knizzi is one of the best people to do an interview, period. Okay, let's see. Um, Chris says, I've been started writing board game reviews for a professional magazine. Any suggestions on how to explain rules concisely in written form? Oof. You did a, you've done a lot of written reviews, Tom. Yeah, I guess, but I wouldn't have any suggestions. It's been a while since I've done a written review. It's been almost 10 years. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I just write them out quickly. <sighs> I wouldn't want to. You just got to boil it down to its simplest mechanisms. Right. You know, a long time ago, I, when I was uh, doing stuff for fun again, um, and Funnigan asked me to write short paragraphs of like a hundred games. They they would they offered me a ticket to Origins to do that. And I was like, yes, in, okay. in a second. Do you know how hard that was to take a game and con- condense it to a single paragraph? That was tough yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, uh, my the, the few <laughs> reviews I've done are usually in the other the seventy two second or the one hundred seventy two second review variety and and in order to do that you really do have to keep pulling back pulling back pulling back to get just the basics of of what's going on get the main goal of the game you're earning points doing blank and uh and and describe only the most interesting novel mechanisms in detail and really pull back on everything else uh because if you get into too much detail it, you just bog things down and, and the listener sort of glosses over. So keep it high level until there's like one thing. Here's the really neat thing that you really want to explain. 
and then you can pull back out again. And I, I think that's the key to being concise. All right. What do you, uh, let's see, what do you do with the games that don't get played? Okay. That's a good question. The first opportunity is we then, uh, the first thing we do with these games is we make an opportunity to the other dice tower reviewers to play them. Mm -hmm. If we reject the game to play it often, no one else is interested in it either. That's how it works. Games are judged on how they look, and some games just don't get reviewed by anybody. Um, and if after that point, if everyone rejects them, we get rid of them somehow, some way. We're not making money on them, that's for sure. Um, okay, I'm assuming at this point that No Pun Included has published his video. <laughs> I haven't seen the video. I've only seen the gif that he made of him shoving me around the booth. Maybe that's what it is, because people are asking why you're getting pushed around a booth. It was for a <laughs> skit. It was. And I thought it'd be funny if Eric was the one who got... Wait, didn't I get pushed too? I uh, I remember you dropping a pastry you were holding. That's right. And I was worried that I was going to actually drop it and it would be ruined. Yes. But it fell onto the desk, so I was able to finish eating it. Yeah, and then I had to clean up all the crumbs. But yes. You have whined a lot in the show. Just saying, Maybe. across the board. Just total whining? Uh, let's see. Were your kids excited about any games when you got back from Essen? I know mine uh, are excited about, about Unlock. Um, what else? Uh, I just got the new Robo Rally in that my, my youngsters keep staring at and saying, I want to play that game because he likes all the painted robots. Uh, but that wasn't from Essen. That was from uh, the Cool Stuff order that arrived like two days later. Uh, unlock is is the big one and um also the i think the cooperative game i picked up the the secret door um should should be of interest I, my at least melody was excited about the um the exit games and such so mm -hmm. so so you know someone else about the stabilizer we tried two new pieces of equipment out of s and one was the microphone for the camera which i would rank a 10 out of 10 that's how much i like that the stabilizer is like an 8 out of 10 so far. It's good, okay. but we're still learning how to use it. And when I say we, I mean basically I. I'm the only person who mess with it. Um, but it is a, it, if when it, it at least keeps the, the camera from being shaky. So I like that. We'll be, we're able to do walkthroughs of things. I think it will look a lot better. Or even just be able to hold it and, you know, at a straight shot. Now, here's the unfortunate thing. The microphone and the steady cam don't work together. Oh, no, okay. Uh, because they both plug into the same t thing on the camera, which is unfortunate. I think there's a workaround that we could do, but it's going to require some redneck technology type thing. Hmm. Duct tape, I should say. Duct tape technology. <laughs> some MacGyvering. No, because MacGyverings would look cool. Okay. Ours will not. <laughs> um, how did we feel about the separate gaming evening? I'm sure we're going to talk about that in our next podcast. Yes. A quick summary would be amazing. Thumbs up. Uh, what company was the microphone from? It's from Samson, not Samsung, but <laughs> Samson. Uh, As in, and Delilah. When Eric, Derek and I went to the NAB conference in Las Vegas, that was one of the stands I stopped by, and I'm really glad I did because them showing these, these microphones that plug into your phone, that's a great idea. Because uh, phones take really good video footage, better than like the cameras that Eric and I are using. Our phones are better than this. Our phones are better than our, most of the cameras we use. It's just that the audio on them is always terrible, and this fixes that. Hmm. Um, what do you know about tasty minstrel prototypes being stolen and pawned to other publishers? Uh, I haven't heard that. I can't imagine. I mean, I can imagine that the, the prototypes would be stolen. I can't imagine other publishers, unless they were duped, right? Here's a prototype. This is my prototype, so on and so forth. Right. But I think once they found out about it, most publishers would have the the uh, professionalism to not do anything about it. Right. Or re return them as, as efficiently as possible. Stefan Feld must be very tall. He made Tom look short. He is. He is taller than me. <laughs> he is short. He is very tall. Um, how does the language barrier affect the Essen experience? I, you know, you feel it, certainly. Uh, 
outside of the hall for sure. Um, and and when you interact with individual attendees, you may run, run into someone who only speaks German. Um, but really, in in dealing with any of the retailers, publishers, they have stocked the booths with at least a few people who speak English. Uh, it, it's pretty rare that you would deal with a, a retailer that only speaks German. Um, you can certainly run into people who, whose English are not terribly good, uh, but you can communicate enough to make a purchase, have a transaction. Uh, buying food was the same way. You may run into to a, a vendor, uh, a, a donor merchant or a currywurst merchant that only speaks German, but you can say one currywurst and figure out how to make that transaction work uh, without too much language. Yeah, it's, it's so easy there. The only booths where I had trouble with the language wasn't German booths. There was a couple of booths from uh, Asia yes, where they didn't speak English very well. But even that wasn't that big of a problem. You can understand people fairly easily. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not a problem at all, especially in the fair. Even in Germany, it's not a big problem. Eric traveled in Germany and didn't die. <laughs> no, I made um, it. It's fine. But Essen itself is extremely English friendly. Yes. Yeah, uh, sure. Let's see here. Oh, the GIF is on your Twitter. Good. <laughs> yes. One month till the cruise, says Jeff. Oh, boy. Yeah. And we've got PAX Unplugged in the middle there, too. Yeah. So it's actually interesting. We have currently, we sent out a, a survey to everybody just today who's been on the cruise about dates for next year because we're trying to figure out the best dates so far let's see about 121 people respond about dates but i thought it'd be interesting let's see eric i one of the questions i asked people was what game would you like to see the most yes so what game do you think uh people want to see the most on the cruise i would say it's either altiplano or meeple circus Well, according to my extremely proficient thing here, it is not, I don't, Meeple Circus, is that, oh yeah, a couple people said Meeple Circus, a total of four actually. Okay, well. And Altiplano looks like it is four. <laughs> well, at least I was consistent. You were. It looks like Scythe is the number one winner right now, although Terraforming Mars is pretty high up there, too. Okay. So neither one is says, new. Yeah, Scythe is easily the number one game people want us to bring. Interesting. So far, nine out of 100. <laughs> okay. 100 people or so picked it. Um, Twilight Imperium. Okay. All right. Blood Rage, Great Western Trail. But yeah, the new stuff, Altiplano is the one that people are most excited about. And the dates that we picked for the cruise, it's like almost even across the board as to which ones people want. <laughs> hmm. the, the question is, do you want to keep it in December or move it to January with perhaps larger cruises on the table? Is that, that what's going on? Uh, well, the larger cruises cost more money. So that's the thing, right? right? Um, we have some ideas. Actually, only one of the cruises, two of the cruises move into 2019 rather than 2018. Uh, but those cruises look like right. they are a high possibility, actually. So we're going to still make the decision. I was surprised at how evenly spread these were. I didn't think people would be excited. This Saturday, me, Sam, and Z are going to go check out the big seven-day ship. Mm. So we're going to walk through that ship and see what it's like. I mean, not that I think it's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I imagine it's going to um, be quite nice. I'm sure it's amazing, but um, we want to look at the meeting space and stuff. Am I going to check out Game 7 of the World Series tonight? No, because <laughs> Eric and I are recording our audio podcast directly after this show. Indeed. Um, do you expect a lot of games released at Essen to be available at PAX Unplugged? I'm going to go with no. I expect a few, but not a lot. Okay. Maybe, but a lot of those European publishers are not going to be at PAX Unplugged. No, unless there's been a concerted effort to bring a pallet of them over or something. But it the turnaround's pretty close here. 
Is there a mega game on the cruise? There's not, but Scott Nicholson's going to be on the cruise doing a uh, thing about uh, designing a game and talking about that, like a little seminar thing of sorts. <laughs> um, Panda is going to be there and giving him the pieces that you need to do that sort of thing. It's kind of a neat thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, this is this is a this is going to be fun. Um, and 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 then, folks, if you're feeling like I'm making you, if I'm trying to make you feel bad for not going, I apologize. That is exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> at least, at least you're honest about it. It is. <laughs> Someone says this enormous cruise ship is terrible, but let's check the bar and the buffet to be sure. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, I mean, how am I supposed to know? But really, we're going to just check different things out. Um, so the next thing coming up, I, I'm actually not sure when the next Dice Tower tonight is. Because we were supposed to record it in two weeks from today. But that is when I will be traveling to PAX Unplugged. Okay. So me and Eric will figure it out. You'll see it, it launch somewhere. Maybe we'll, we'll do it from PAX Unplugged. Probably not, though. We're not going to yeah. get good internet there. Probably not. Unless it's really uh, good. We're, we are staying in the same hotel room, right? That's true. That's true. But hotel internet. So, And I don't get this. How can so these hotels smart. be like five-star? We stay at some really nice hotels. They have great stuff across the board, and the internet is always terrible. Always terrible. Yeah. Well, now they're, they're charging you for the real internet. Like, for free, sure, you can get this El Cheapo internet. But if you pay us $9 a day, well, then we'll actually flip the switches and let you use the real stuff. I don't get it, though. I can go to McDonald's and get better internet. Yeah, it, it, they're really behind the times here. It, just charge us five bucks more for the room and let us use real internet, please. Thank you. All righty, folks. Well, that's pretty much it for this time. These are shorter shows, only an hour each. I know you'd love to hear more from Derek, but we do. I'd like to Derek. hear more from Derek. I meant Eric. All right. Uh, yeah. This year's cruise is sold out. It's kind of late to be coming on board now um, because it is less than a month away. And I really think next year the cruise is going to sell out quicker. But once we have it, we'll announce it, and you'll be able to get on board with that. Dice Tower Convention is going to be um, going up, I think, I want to say November 15th. But that's probably wrong, but it's not too far away. So keep an eye out for that because that's going to be exciting. Uh, the sign up for Dice Tower Con that is going to sell out. It's going to sell out. It's just yeah. a guarantee. So Are we want to keeping be in, the the numbers about the same this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you like that, we might add a few more people, but not a whole ton of people. Definitely more publishers want to be involved, though. That's for sure. Wow. And I have some interesting ideas of things that we'll be doing. But whatever, that's out of my mind right now. Dice Tower Cruise and Pax Unplugged, the last two things of the year. Whew. And it's been a year, huh? Do you know, already have half our conventions scheduled for next year? Wow. Well, okay then. <laughs> I know it. I've got my, my local guy in Connecticut wants to have a chat with you. You better hurry, apparently. Yeah, he better. Because um, I'm definitely lining things yeah. up as quickly as I can. I'm not even trying. I'm just talking to people who get in touch with us. We will be at Gen Con and Essen for sure. Those are the ones we can announce. Okay. <laughs> we will be at Gen Con and Essen and, and Dice Tower Con and Dice oh, Tower course. Cruise. Those are the yes. four you know that we'll be at. Okay. Nothing else is yet set in stone. All right. All the close to being set in stone. Okay. All right. Well, that's that. Um... We'll see you guys next time. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Eric Summer. And you've been listening to The Dice Tower. Thanks for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. If all goes well, Tom and I will see you in, I don't know, a few weeks for another installment of Dice Tower Tonight. Our show is sponsored by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Tom and me with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. Saying hello to a dude named Kravik, provided by, hi, Kravik. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at BoardGameGeek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at Dicetower at gmail.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, 
Have fun gaming. Bam, 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 bam.